Charlotte, I'm Pam Oliver. Well, getting back into a daily football routine has been a bit of a challenge for Eric Reed. He told me that all he did for nine straight months while he didn't have a job was work out every single day. That said, head coach Ron Rivera, he's going to keep Reed on a bit of a pitch count. We're talking 25 to 30 snaps or so. Interestingly enough, Reed did tell me that one thing that makes this whole thing bittersweet for him is that Colin Kaepernick, who started this whole social injustice movement, remains out of the game. By the way, Reed did kneel during the anthem. A quick Giants note, Odell Beckham Jr., the wide receiver, will return punts. They needed that as a boost. Back to you. All right, thanks very much, Pam. Carolina won the toss, elected to defer. Big stretch for Pat Shermer's Giants. Two games over the next five days. Philadelphia on Thursday night. Ron Rivera's Panthers coming off a bye. Record of two and one. Jawill Davis in his second game with the Giants is back deep. Graham Gano gets things started. We are underway in Charlotte. Taken at the three by Davis. Out across the 20. So Eli Manning leads the Giants offense out onto the field following a 23-yard return by Davis. Highest completion percentage of Manning's career over the first four games of a season. Giants have scored on two of their four opening drives, a pair of touchdowns, and Manning has completed 83% of his passes on opening drives over the first four games. Two tight end set, Saquon Barkley in the backfield as the Giants start from their 27-yard line. On first down, it is Barkley. It's Julius Peppers, the 17-year vet. Hits Barkley for a loss of two on the first play from scrimmage. As we check out the Giants' offensive line, third start for Chad Wheeler at right tackle. I think Will Hernandez, the left guard, the rookie guard, is playing some of his best football since a tough night in Dallas in week two. And Odell Beckham Jr., keep an eye on him today. He's looking to break out. Giants without tight end Evan Ingram once again. On second and 12, off the fake to Barkley. Manning fires downfield. How about that catch by Odell Beckham for a Giants first down? And sometimes when you're trying to break out, conditions might not be perfect. And that was not a perfect pass from Eli Manning. But Odell Beckham Jr. does what he does better than anyone in the league right now, is catch the football with one hand and bring it to his body. We have a colleague named Chris, Chris Carter, who was famous for that and went to the Hall of Fame. Odell Beckham following in his footsteps. And that one to the Beckham highlight reel. Game 13. From the 38, it's Barkley forcing his way up the middle for a gain of two. New Jersey native Mike Adams on the stop for this Carolina Panthers defense. And right now they've got to make sure they stay attached to the line of scrimmage. That big defensive front led by Kwan Short inside is going to have to play well. And they'll get a lot of play, of course, from Luke Keekley in the middle. And you just mentioned Mike Adams, a strong safety, free safety type, making a play at the line of scrimmage. On second down, off the fake to Buckley, batting under pressure. And he threw it into the ground. David Mayo in Manning's face. You just mentioned number 55, Mayo, right here, who's starting because Thomas Davis is not in the lineup. He's supposed to contact Odell Beckham, gets a small piece of him, and realizes his best path was to pressure Eli Manning at that point, and he did exactly that. Davis serving the final game of his suspension. Beckham, bottom of your screen, defended by James Bradbury. Third down and eight. Manning steps up, throws over the middle, and it is broken up. Intended for Sterling Shepard, Captain Munnerlyn. Breaking up the pass, Giants will punt it away. So on the first series for the New York Giants, struggled to run the football. Got a big play to Odell Beckham, and then on this one, Captain Munderland, the nickelback, was really, he wasn't just covering him, he was embracing Kelvin, uh, excuse me, uh, Sterling Shepard. And he kind of got away with one there, because he was all over him long before the ball got there. Riley 
Dixon punting from his 30-yard line. Demir Bird from the nine. And he's cut down back at the six-yard line. Quarterback, I don't think there's a guy in the league history that's been able to do what he's done. Our first look at Cam Newton and the Panthers offense. They start from the six-yard line. Two tight ends, McCaffrey in the backfield takes the handoff. Coming off a 184-yard game two weeks ago against the Cincinnati Bengals. Gain of three, Cam Newton. Four touchdowns in that one over Cincinnati. Two in the air, two on the ground. His season numbers. That completion percentage, an all-time high for him. North Turner, the offense coordinator, coming in. We'll get into that as the game goes along. But he's definitely helping Cam with his completion percentage. McCaffrey split out to the right. Movement prior to the snap. False start. False start. Offense, number 74. Half the distance. Second down. That's the left tackle, Chris Clark, who was signed by the Panthers prior to week two of this season. But this Panthers offensive line that you see on your screen now, our colleague Tony Gonzalez in our Fox kickoff show talked about how they're the key to this offense. We know about McCaffrey. We know about Devin Funches, the wide receiver. Obviously, you know about Cam Newton. But Tony talked about how that offensive line is the key to their success because if they can get push and movement, the offensive line and the running game can get going. Play clock is at two. Panthers did not get the snap away in time. Before the snap, the layup game. Offense, number one. Half the distance to the goal. Still second down. After the penalty, you get the sense that Cam Newton thought that the clock would, that the clock would start on the snap of the ball. Not that the clock was in motion at that point coming back in and out of the huddle. He lost track, and the Panthers were penalized as a result. Back-to-back -back penalties, false start. Followed by a delay of game, forcing Carolina back to their two-yard line. Second down and 14. The fullback, Arma, takes it out to the six. So Carolina now facing a third down and long on their opening possession, played by a pair of penalties. Look at this Giants defense, and Alec Ogletree coming over for the Rams has been a big addition at middle linebacker. And they're getting Eli Apple back this week at the corner. Had a tough year in 2017, was playing very well before he injured a groin in game two. They're happy to have him back in the lineup to complement their secondary, which is led by Landon Collins, number 21. Apple missed the last two games. Play clock again, winding down. They get the snap off this time. Three receivers set. Newton from the end zone, and that is broken up by Janoris Jenkins. Pass intended for Devin Funches, so the Panthers will punt it away from their end zone. Time wasn't an issue. He's protected well, but this is excellent coverage by Jenkins as he drapes himself on the intended receiver, Devin Funches. He gives a lot of way, a lot of way in terms of size, but when the ball's down that low, that puts it right in Janoris Jenkins' wheelhouse. Giants, as Pam mentioned earlier, going with Odell Beckham Jr. on punt returns. He's returned only one all season. Giants last in the league in that category. Their long return is only six yards. Taken at the 46 by Beckham. So this is the best punt return of the season to this point by the Giants to the 40-yard line of Carolina. 16 yards on the return. Excellent field position. Giants start in Panthers territory. Some big special teams plays for the Giants early. Oh, Jawel it. Davis, the tackle on the Giants punt, right hitting there. Carolina, and then the big return by Beckham. This is Barkley. Barkley wrapped up by Julius Peppers after a short game. This is a great point about flipping the field, and the Giants have been struggling with field position all year. And to be able to make that type of a play, give them this type of field position, for those who are wondering about pressing the offense, here's a great opportunity 
Beckham down at the bottom of the screen, one on one. Three receivers set, Shepard slot to the left. Manning throws, it's Beckham, who makes the catch at the Carolina 25 for a Giants first down, a 13 yard connection. And I know a lot of the fans, they want to see the long ball thrown. But when the ball goes in Odell Beckham's hands on that slant, Ron Rivera, the head coach of the Carolina Panthers, told us it reminds me when Jerry Rice was in his prime, and that slant play could go for five yards or it could go for 50 after the catch. Three receivers set once again for the Giants from the Carolina 25. Manning throws and Russell Shepard unable to make the catch and then it was nearly picked off by a diving Dante Jackson who already has three interceptions this season over his first three NFL games. Russell Shepard is a special teams captain when he's with Tampa Bay and coming out of LSU all the potential in the world but hasn't really developed to what you might think as a receiver and he almost coughed one up there and gave the Carolina Panthers a takeaway. Dante Jackson just missing the opportunity. Russell Shepard spent last year here in Carolina. Second down and 10. Beckham in motion. The handoff to Barkley and he will lose yardage. Shaq Thompson with the penetration. Excellent play by Shaq Thompson being able to see it. So he'll come from right over here making the play. Here comes Thompson. And he doesn't come for the quarterback. He came for Saquon Barkley. You always hear about run blitzes. They anticipated run and targeted number 26. And Thompson came free. Now Beckham, top of your screen, split wide to the left. Strolling Shepard in the slot. Penalty marker, false start. Star. Offense number 81. Five yard penalty. Still third. Down. That's on Russell Shepard, who's having a tough series. He really is. Pops one in the air, almost turned into an interception. Now he ends up costing his team five yards. And that's not something you want to give up going against this tough Carolina Panthers defense and with the field position that the Giants began this drive with. Julius Peppers, a couple of big plays early in this game. Third down and 17. Barkley split out to the right, three receivers to the left side. Giants must get to the 15 for a first down. Pass underneath to Barkley. And he's brought down at the 23. Field goal unit comes out, but first the game break with Carissa Thompson in Los Angeles. Carissa. Thank you, Kay. Let's go to Pittsburgh. So all the drama. This is a way to quiet critics. James Conner dives in for the one-yard score. The Steelers' first opening drive touchdown of the season. Extra point, no good. They're up 6 nothing. Kenny? All right, thanks, Carissa. Giants send out the field goal unit. Aldrich Rosas has not missed a kick this season, a field goal or an extra point. This will be a 42-yard attempt from the right hash. Riley Dixon places it down. The kick by Rosas is straight through. Beckham with some big plays early. Giants strike first. Two big first down receptions by Odell Beckham at a punt return which set up the Giants in Carolina territory, they wind up with a field goal. Yeah, you saw Odell Beckham on one side, the corners for the Panthers on the other. So the scoring, you see the scoring drive there. Rosas with the 42-yard field goal to pay things off. But the big play, Jawill Davis, the big tackle on punt coverage, knocked him down at their own six-yard line, the Carolina Panthers, and they struggled to get out of there and flip the field. Demir Bird lets it go. So this time the Panthers will start at their 25 with the number one rushing offense in the entire NFL. And it's not just because they have good players. We saw Newton, there's McCaffrey, who's really starting to come into his own second year in the league and really chewed up Cincinnati with 134 yards. But here's the thing. They have a commitment to the running game. A lot of people talk about it. Hey, we want to be a good running team. But when first time of trouble kicks in, they go away from it. Carolina does not. They press the running game the entire four quarters. There's McCaffrey. Panthers with two hey. tight ends. Chris Manhurts and Ian Thomas still without the injured Greg Olson. From the 25 on first down off the fake to McCaffrey. Newton throws. Funches 
Makes the catch for a Panthers first down. Out of the 43-yard line. Watch the route of Devin Funches as he works up here on Eli Apple and then breaks back to the sideline. He gets Apple to believe he's taking him upfield and then gets the big foot down, but I didn't see a second foot come down. No, they initially signaled first down, but now it's ruled an incompletion, only one foot down in bounds. And that's a good call by the officials, a really nice catch because Funches got the first foot down, but the second foot came over the sideline. That was well done by the officials catching that. There's your first foot. Coming down, but hold it a second. There's the toe drag. Now you've got two, so guess what you have, folks? Now you've got an opportunity for a catch. Because it looked like he just brought the foot over the sideline. But on second look, and there's the challenge flag. I think Carolina he'll win it. Carolina is challenging the rule of the field of an incomplete pass. So Rod Rivera challenging the previous call. Jerome Boger will take a look at it. The play, the rule on the field is changed to a completed catch. It'll be first and ten at the 37 yard line. Carolina is not charged. So you see it, you see the white there between his shoe. So that's a completed catch on the left foot, and then the right foot with the toe drag behind it. Nice job by Ron Rivera and his coaches upstairs urging him to challenge that one and pick it up for Carolina. First challenge by Rivera this season. Panthers do not lose a timeout. Samuel in motion. The handoff to McCaffrey. And then he flips it back to D.J. Moore. Moore still on his feet across midfield. And tackled by Curtis Riley in Giants territory. 18 yards for the first round pick out of Maryland. And one of the top things on his scouting report coming out of Maryland is once he catches the ball, he becomes a running back. But watch him come around the corner. Guys do a nice job setting things up, and then he breaks a tackle there, breaks a second tackle. So watch who's going to lead. Number one, the quarterback, Cam Newton, gets a block, and then watch him break a tackle there, breaks a tackle here, keeps his balance, and gets upfield for additional yardage. That's one of the top things in his scouting report. Becomes a runner, a strong runner, after the catch. Play clock winding down. Newton using a timeout. Panthers called for a delay of game earlier. Now they use their first timeout. Well, Saturday, Minnesota gunning for a huge upset when they take on Dwayne Haskins and number three, Ohio State. It all starts at noon Eastern on FS1 and the Fox Sports app. I know the Golden Gophers better bring some defense in that one. Haskins threw six touchdown passes yesterday in their win against Indiana. But watch. On the reverse, all these guys will get blocks, and that's fine. But of course, watch number one right here. It's going to get more attention because the quarterback, look at what he does. He absolutely decimates number 96, outside linebacker Kareem Martin. And then a really nice job by DJ Moore running through two attempted tackles for big time yardage upfield. Moore gained 18 on the plate. Manhurt shifts it to the backfield, first and 10 from the 45-yard line of the Giants as Newton throws, and it's caught, taken down to the 37-yard line by the rookie tight end out of Indiana, Ian Thomas, for a gain of seven. In the absence of Greg Olson, Panthers with a couple of tight ends with New York ties. Thomas... Began his collegiate career at Nassau Community College. Chris Manhurts from the Bronx. He was a basketball player in high school. And 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 so and so was uh, Manhurts at Canisius. This is McCaffrey. First down and more. Christian McCaffrey to the 25-yard line of the Giants. 13 yards. Take a look at the blocking because he's going to end up breaking it back in this direction. So as they move people, Trey Turner, number 70. Number 72, Taylor Moton. And then he's going to come right through there. Excellent job by McCaffrey. Look at the eyes. You see the vision. He finds the hole and gapes his way through it. That's well blocked and well read by Christian McCaffrey. Hey, Disney, even flip a right, even flip a right. Disney, Three receivers right. set up to the left side. McCaffrey in the backfield. Play clock again is winding down. 
Off the face to McCaffrey. On the slam, it is Curtis Samuel inside the 10, the 5. Still on his feet. He dives across. Touchdown. That's the first touchdown of Curtis Samuel's career. He's a New Yorker as well, Charles. Grew up in Brooklyn. Doing it against his hometown team. And he's coming off of injury. An irregular heartbeat had kept him out of action. And he got really nice blocking downfield from his offensive lineman, including number 67, Ryan Khalil. But look at the effort that he made at the end. Twisting, diving, and getting into the end zone. And Cam Newton wanted the ball to give it to a fan. And Samuel said, that's my first one. I'm keeping that one. You know the extra point. First game of the season for Curtis Samuel. Gives Carolina the lead back after this message from State Farm. Five plays, 75 yards. First NFL score for Curtis Samuel. He did say that he felt fresh and strong coming back. He's going to come inside on the inside screen. So watch the blocking he gets. Funch is right there. Look at these guys getting downfield to make plays. There's Clark 74, there's Khalil 67. He spins out of attempted tackle there. He runs through and out of two more and dives his way in. And Trey Turner had the ball. He wanted to give it to a fan. Cam wanted to give it to a fan, as is his want. But Curtis Samuel said, that's my first touchdown in the NFL. I need the ball. Out of Erasmus Hall High School in Brooklyn, New York, a distinct New York flavor on this Carolina Panthers roster. And they're bringing that Northeast to the South, and Samuel getting back into action, eager to make a contribution and make a play. And boy, did he ever with a little help from his friends. So now Eli Manning and the Giants start from their 25-yard line. Field goal on their last possession. Off the fake to Barkley. Manning able to get rid of it. This is Sterling Shepard. And he will cross the 35. Picks up a Giants first down to the field. Pam. Well, Kenya, I've been checking out this field. It was in pristine condition when we got here, but as we go along, it's coming up in chunks here and there, and it's only the first quarter. I'm seeing guys slip as well. Um, I watched it before the game, and it was a little slick, and I saw Odell Beckham Jr. while they were on the bench change his shoes. Back to you. Yeah, thanks a lot, Pam. And it looks like they might have even resodded in the middle of the field already in this season. We've had a little bit of rain here and throughout the rest of the East Coast. Maybe it affected here. From the 35 on first down, Manning fires downfield, could not connect with DeWill Davis, Dante Jackson defending. I know they didn't connect there, but I like what they're trying to do. Meaning, everybody wants them to push the ball downfield. Well, how do you get it downfield when you have that much cushion from a defensive back? Because Dante Jackson gave him almost 10 yards. Well, he hit him on a second move. Looked like he's running the slant that Odell Beckham ran so successfully early and then came back to the outside. They were just unable to connect. Beckham split out to the right, bottom of your screen. Second and 10, 35-yard line. As Manning throws, it's Beckham, his third catch. All for Giants' first downs. He's in Panthers' territory to the Carolina 46, a 19-yard pass play. It's not just that they know that he's going to run the slant because he does it so well, but he does it so violently. When he commits to that slant route, he goes and he played and his play speed is better than most people's. So you think he's at one point, he might be ahead of you. You've got to up your game when Odell Beckham takes off and he was down on contact. Catches at 13, 13 and 19 yards by Beckham. Here in the first quarter. Manning in trouble, he steps up, and is touched down at the 48-yard line. 
I love the pressure to Los Angeles. Carissa. Thanks, Kenny. Steelers up 6-0 against the Falcons when third and long. Ben Roethlisberger finds Juju Smith-Schuster for this 18-yard score. Steelers up 13-0. Kenny, Charles, and Pam. Hey, Carissa, Pam just gave us a great report on field conditions here, how things might be a little slick. I'm wondering the same thing in Pittsburgh. They had a college game there yesterday that was delayed by weather. I'm wondering how the field's going to hold up after that. That one went to overtime. We'll keep an eye on that. Beckham on the sidelines. Here's Barkley. Not much here in the first quarter for Barkley. And he will not get back to the line of scrimmage once again. I think that this play was made right here initially. Wes Horton, number 96. Look at him get through Patrick Omame and see how he gets through there and makes Saquon Barkley bow back to try and get around to the corner. That allowed Shaq Thompson to pursue upfield, force him back inside where all the traffic is, and look at all those white shirts surrounding Barkley. That play was made initially by the defensive end, Wes Horton, number 96. Negative yardage on the ground. Six touches for Barkley for a total of five yards. Play clock at two. Third down and 14. And the Giants called a timeout with the play clock winding down. Late first quarter with the Panthers leading 7-3. A cancer diagnosis can come at any time, but regardless of the type of cancer, you could be prepared to fight it. The NFL and the American Cancer Society continuing their longtime partnership on crucial catch to help the nation play offense against all types of cancer. Visit NHL.com slash crucial catch to learn more and to complete the defender for personalized tips on reducing your cancer risk. Great to see Giants general manager Dave Gettleman yes. at the game today. Clean bill of health completed his treatments for lymphoma former general manager of Panthers his first road game of the season it's great as well as New York special teams coach Thomas McGay he also battling and winning his fight as well third down at 14 Manning to Shepard Shepard pulls a defender James Bradbury and is down at the 39 yard line gain of 11 three yards shy of a first down. And look at the effort by Sterling Shepard trying to go over number 24, Bradbury. And here comes Captain Munderland, 41. And I believe David Mayo, 55, brings up fourth down. At the 39, so the Giants leave their offense on the field. Shuffling personnel. Sending in a couple of tight ends. They now have three tight ends on the field. They don't, uh, look, they don't look organized don't, for it. The play clock is winding down once again. So Pat Shermer, last week against the Saints, did not use any of his timeouts in the first half when perhaps he should have. And now he's forced to use two in the first quarter. And he didn't want to use that one because he had it in his mind to be aggressive today and go after Carolina. That call on fourth down was something he had in his head. If they were fourth and four or less or somewhere in that neighborhood, he was going to go for it because of where they were in field position. And then the team didn't respond with the right personnel on the field. Play clock winding down. I saw a little frustration from Pat Shermer on the sidelines, and rightly so. I'll guarantee you he talked to his team about it prior to. We saw Carolina call for the layup game earlier, and then they used the timeout. And now the Giants using two on this possession. But they still appear to be going for it, Kenny. They haven't changed up their mind. Now they should have organization and should have the play call in. They need three yards for a first down. This is one where you've got to keep an eye on Barkley out of the backfield as a pass catcher. Bunch formation to the left, including Beckham. Giants must get to the 36. Manning throws, and it's incomplete. Intended for Beckham. Panthers will take over on downs. Kenny, you mentioned the bunch formation, trying to find a way to create some confusion in the secondary and shake free their number one target. Here's the bunch, and they tried to use the first two receivers as a wall, and it works very well. And there's an opportunity for the catch. The ball's out there. 
That's what Odell Beckham is going to look at himself later and say, when a team's struggling and I want to make plays, that's a perfect opportunity to make that catch. So now the Panthers take over in excellent field position at their 39 yard line. CJ Anderson and McCaffrey in the backfield. The handoff is to Anderson. Out to the 43. 1,000 yards on the ground for Anderson with the Broncos last season. You no, know, oftentimes, Kenny, when you bring in two backs into the backfield, you have a bigger one and a smaller one here. It's two smaller ones they call the pony set here in Carolina. On second down, it's Anderson again. And he is close to a first down. Ray Ray Armstrong made the tackle. He's just short as time winds down in this first quarter. Panthers do not have to run a play. Third down and one. When we come back, Giants took the lead on a field goal, and then the Panthers answered. First NFL touchdown for Curtis Samuel quarter numbers with the Panthers leading 7-3 negative yardage on the ground Charles for the Giants and that's where the problem is going to be for them is going to be right there if they can't run the football the pressure ratchets up on Eli Manning and here comes Carolina who loves to run it and they have extra offensive linemen in the ball game Amini Silatolo is one of them on third down and one it's McCaffrey and he will not get there Kerry Wynn, the first giant, in on the tackle. And he's one of those guys that people keep talking about his effort. They need to talk about his play. Kerry Wynn continues to make plays for the New York Giants. And I have to think inside, guys like Damon Harrison, number 98, B.J. Hill, 95, Dalvin Tomlinson, 94, they helped stack things up and allowed Kerry Wynn to help get to the ball carrier. A really nice stand there for the Giants' defensive front. Beckham back deep. Three receptions today. His first punt return was 15 yards. Nine yards longer than any other return by a Giant. On a punt return this season. Ball is loose. Bouncing into the end zone. And it's a Panthers touchdown. Recovered in the end zone by Colin Jones. In my initial look at this, I feel like Odell Beckham tried to do too much on this play. He tried to block to keep a, a Carolina punt cover guy away from the football so it could go into the end zone. And when he tried to block, he turned it into disaster. Watch here. See him coming over? He's trying to affect the play. It ends up creating all sorts of havoc. And once the ball's touched, Jenkins can't possess it. Can't, it's now possessed by Apple 24, and then Colin Jones beats everyone to the end to the football in the end zone. It all started with Odell Beckham trying to affect the play and keep the punt coverage guy away from the football. And there's Chase Blackburn, the special teams coach for the Carolina Panthers, understandably amped up because it looks like they just got six on that play. And this happens when you're one and three, Kenny. Guys trying to make plays, trying to do extras. Now, if it is ruled a muff, the kicking team cannot advance a muff, but I'm not sure this would fall into that category. No one ever possessed the football. They have zero possession. All right, the ball ends up hitting the ground, and now it's a total free-for-all. And the ball was bouncing around in the end zone. See, right there where Beckham's coming over, trying to knock DJ Moore off of the play. And then Jenkins doesn't have it. He's, he picks it up. Ball's knocked out of his hands. Apple dives for it. He can't get it. And there's Colin Jones, number 42 out of TCU, diving on the football. You know Colin Jones took his LSATs at one point, thought about going to law school. I think he adjudicated this play pretty well. But right here. Okay, so Jenkins picks it up. Now, could that be interpreted as a muff or I a don't fumble? Know. To, me, to me, if you're going to count it as possession, it becomes a fumble. Every scoring play is reviewed. Jerome Boger confirms the touchdown. Panthers introduced their special teams prior to the game today, including Colin Jones. 
Say that paid off pretty well, didn't it? Usually it's the offense or defensive units introduced to the crowd over the public address. It was the special teams for Carolina. And they score the second touchdown of this game, now 14-3. Well, the Giants years ago, Dell Beckham Jr. on punt returns. The punt hits off Beckham. Then Jenkins had an opportunity to scoop it up, and it's recovered in the end zone by Colin Jones for a touchdown. And that's what Colin Jones does best, plays on special teams. When he's had to play in the regular defense, has it been his forte? That's why the acquisition of Eric Reed, as Pam Oliver told us at the top of the broadcast, was a big deal for the Carolina Panthers to improve the back end of their defense. Joel Davis on the return for the Giants across the 20, the 25, down at the 27-yard line as we welcome in Dean Blandino to take us through that Carolina touchdown recovering in the end zone. Yeah, go ahead, Dean. Bring us through, take yeah. us through it. <laughs> After all of that, all you have is a punt, first touch by the return team, the Giants, recovered by the kicking team, the Panthers, in the end zone for a touchback. Is that so Jenkins simple? never... It's that simple. Jenkins never possessed it, but it didn't matter because the ball was recovered in the end zone. Had Jenkins possessed it, that's a fumble. Now the Panthers can advance it. If he just muffs it, the ball can't be advanced. So if they recover in the field of play, it's dead right there. All right, thanks, Dean. Thank you, Dean. First career touchdown for Colin Jones. Play action on first down. Manning hit as he throws. Second and 10 upcoming. That's F.A. Obama, what a story. Born in Nigeria, moved to London, played in his first NFL game two weeks ago, and was named the NFC Defensive Player of the Week. And where he, where he benefited is what you're seeing on your screen, the coverage in the secondary. Eli Manning, nowhere to go with the football, can't get, can't get rid of it, and allowed Obama to get to him and force the incompletion. Second and ten, Russell Shepard. And he was banned immediately by Dante Jackson. Gain of three on the play. Third down at seven. He was looking for the tight end, Red Ellison. I think that face kind of says it all about that possession, because there was an opportunity there, and unable to complete it downfield to Ellison. And, and Carolina, which is not a huge blitz team, brought a lot of pressure at Eli Manning, and they blocked it fairly well and gave them a chance. Tamir Bird is back deep for Carolina. Riley Dixon punting for the second time. Fair catch called for by Bird at the 20. 14-3, Carolina. Two Carolina Panthers have both scored their first NFL touchdowns today. Curtis Samuel, a second-year receiver, and Colin Jones, a safety and special teams player now in his eighth season. And both of them, you know, Samuel expects to score a touchdown. Jones, that's a gift. Let's see what Carolina can do on offense here. The Giants stuffed them at midfield on their last drive. On uh, first and 10 from the 20, this is McCaffrey. Came into this game as the second leading rusher in the NFL as far as yards per game at just over 90 to games eight on first down. They keep going back to that offensive line, which is not what they expected to have when the season began. Matt Khalil was supposed to be the left tackle. He's been hurt. Chris Clark, you noted it earlier, Kenny, was signed before week two and has played left tackle ever since. Taylor Moton playing at right tackle for the injured Darrell Williams, who was an all-pro last year. And they got Trey Turner back out of concussion protocol this week. They're getting nice push up front most plays. 
McCaffrey and Anderson in the backfield behind that offensive line. Off the fake to McCaffrey. Newton with loads of time. Wide open is the tight end, Thomas. In Giants territory, his second catch today. Ian Thomas gains 28 yards. Kenny, you detailed that one perfectly. The loads of time for Cam Newton allowed him. Okay, so these guys up front are going to give him so much time that watch Thomas number 80 in the middle of your screen. He lets him clear all the way through the middle and find the open area. Cam Newton not pressured at all, able to let him clear, step into it, and put it on number 80 Thomas for a big game. Play clock again winding down on Cam Newton. And Carolina will use timeout number two. So both teams in the same boat twice have called timeouts due are, to the play clock. Are they having trouble getting the play call in? Are they having trouble getting it in through the headset communication? That's, I mean, I'm just trying to figure out what could possibly be, to do, you know, allowing them to take all these timeouts and not be as crisp. So in a lot of stadiums, the play clock that you just saw there, the 25, the top of your screen, that's usually down in here where quarterbacks can see it on the ends of the wall. Here in Carolina, it's up at the top, so maybe sometimes they lose sight of that as they adjust, but you wouldn't expect that out of Cam Newton. This is his home stadium. There's Scott Turner, quarterback's coach now for the Carolina Panthers. His father, Norv, the offensive coordinator for the Panthers. Norv upstairs. First and 10, 45-yard line. Newton again with time. Nice soft touch, and the catch is made by Samuel for a Panthers first down at the Giants, 33. This offensive line is giving him so much time. It allows the receivers to get that first move in, the second move. And look at Samuel able to get the move and run away from Eli Apple back downhill towards the sideline. Both feet down, drags the toe for emphasis. But Cam Newton doesn't have any pressure in his face, able to survey the field. Newton starts the game five of six. 12-yard connection to Samuel. From the 33, Newton has it after the fake to McCaffrey. And he'll be taken down by Lorenzo Carter for a loss of one and then some extracurricular activity. Time for a game break to Los Angeles. Kurt. All right, an important game for both the Falcons and the Steelers. Well, this will help Atlanta. 43 yards, Matt Ryan to Mohamed Sanu. And Atlanta's marching inside the 25-yard line, trying to at least even the score, if not take the lead midway through the second quarter. Kenny Charles and Pan. That's more of what we expect to see out of the Atlanta Falcons high-flying offense. Trying to get back into this one. Cam Newton just got his first carry of this game. Atlanta with a win over the Panthers back in week two. Carolina's only loss. DJ Moore fighting for a couple of extra yards as we set it down to the field. Pam. Kenny, remember we learned from talking to Cam Newton the other day that a real and palpable sense of earth. Now in his eighth season, Newton believes it's really now or never for him. He told us as the years go by, opportunities keep slipping too. He wants success that's more sustainable, and Newton's hoping Norv Turner's up. All right, thanks, Pam. We apologize for the technical issues. Third down and seven. Newton looked right, he throws left. And tackled at the 29-yard line is Jarius Wright. So the Panthers will now send out the field goal unit. He has a lineup for that field goal, but Pam's report is a big one about what Cam Newton feels. She mentioned his, his telling us about a sense of urgency, not letting opportunities slip by. He's in his eighth year. Another offensive coordinator trying to win a Super Bowl for these Panthers is very important to him. He's trying his best to get that done this year. He's already been to one. This will be a 47-yard attempt. Graham Cano, 32 straight at home, and 31 in a row from inside 50. And those two streaks remain intact as Cano connects from 47, extending the lead for Luke Keekley. 
And the Panthers against Beckham and the Giants. Seven play, 51 yard drive for Carolina. Graham Cano connecting from 47 yards out. Cam Newton perfect on that drive. Panthers have now scored 17 consecutive points after the Giants took a 3 0 lead. Davis is deep. Davis lets it go. First and 10, 25 yard line. Charles, it's been a seesaw season over the first four games for Odell Beckham Jr. 111 receiving yards at the opener and 51. Game two in Dallas, 109 in Houston. And then at home against the Saints last week, 60. Here today, the seesaw day continues. Three catches for first downs but was unable to field that punt, which led to the Carolina touchdown on special teams. I think my favorite part of the seesaw was seeing Eli jump up over the fence when it was good, or if it was stormy for him on the other side. Yeah, Eli was excited in those see? two games, <laughs> two of them. First and 10, 25, it's Barkley, and that's his best run of the day. Previous long was two. Saquon Barkley gained six on first down. And that's, you just said exactly what they need. And they got it there. Gain six on first down, second and four. What's that pet phrase coaches like? Playing ahead of the chains? Staying on schedule? That's exactly what you get now. The playbook opens up for Pat Shermer at this point. At least 100 yards from scrimmage for Barkley in each of his first four NFL games. Second and four. This is Barkley once again. Cuts to the outside. And has a first down and more. Out to midfield before he was forced out of bounds. So negative yardage for Barkley on the ground prior to this possession. He gained six on first down and then 20 on second. Watch here, because here's where the issue is going to be. Look at the jump cut that gets him outside. That's the rookie number 28, Rashawn Galden out of Tennessee. He takes the wrong angle with, uh, with Saquon Barkley and with his speed and quickness and vision with that jump cut, he got to the outside where Galden was supposed to protect. Wayne Gallman has replaced Barkley in the backfield. First and 10 from the Carolina 49. Penalty marker as Manning throws incomplete. It was over Beckham and shy of Shepard. Illegal formation, offense, number 87, there's only line of scrimmage covering up the tight end. Five-yard penalty, replay, first down. We mentioned Barkley at least 100 yards from scrimmage in each of his first four games. The NFL record just last year, Kareem Hunt, first seven, Adrian Peterson, first five in his rookie season. Some pretty good company with Billy Sims and LT. Yeah, you talk about some outstanding company there. LT in the Hall of Fame and a few other guys are definitely going to be talking about it. And now, hit for a loss is Barkley. You mentioned Rashawn Golden on that previous play. This time, he makes the tackle. Now that's a rookie that learns pretty quickly from his mistakes. To the left of your screen, coming up field, cuts down the angle this time and doesn't allow Saquon Barkley to make the jump cut and get outside. That's an excellent job by the rookie out of Tennessee, picking up from his mistake the first time and making up for it on that one. Second down at 18. Beckham, bottom of your screen. Here's Beckham looking to throw. Wide open, it's Barkley. Inside the 20, still going. Into the end zone, touchdown! Well, Beckham wanted the Giants to go downfield a little bit more. How about that? 57 yards. And how about the design scheme to set it up by Pat Shermer on offense? Because obviously throwing it to Beckham brings all the attention there. 
but he's able to set things up with Barkley to get him out in an open position while all the attention and all the eyes were on number 13. So sometimes you don't catch him, you throw him, and you turn it into a big play. Beckham said during the week, we haven't brought energy every day. We need to play with heart. I'm passionate and energetic. I think the entire Giants sideline is passionate and energetic right now. A nice block in front of him by Shepard 87 to give him enough time because Bradbury became a pass rusher on this play. But watch Barkley, number 26 out of the backfield. He just sneaks out because all the attention and all the eyes of the defense because Odell Beckham is such a threat. When the ball goes in his direction, everyone's eyes go to him. And all eyes are on 13 and people forgot about 26, secures the catch and then finishes it off escaping the attempted tackle by Jermaine Carter Jr. number 56 for the initial touchdown of the game by the Giants. So and all of a sudden, they're right back in this thing. There's well, some passion. There's energy, there's passion, there's enthusiasm. And that's what this Giants team needs. So Saquon Barkley's first NFL touchdown reception comes not from Eli Manning, but from Odell Beckham Jr. on his second career pass attempt First one was back in 2014, Beckham's first completion. Kickoff out of bounds, Panthers will start at the 40. And that is, you talk about a buzz kill for you, all right? That is just horrible for your football team. You get your momentum, your team's excited, defense amped up about getting out there, and your kicker kicks it out of bounds. And Pat Shermer's gonna be supportive because he might need him for a field goal later, but inside, he's seething right now. That just takes the excitement and tamps it down on your own team on something that shouldn't happen. That's another special teams mistake. One earlier by Beckham. Yeah, that, that's, that's one that's just, as they say, inexcusable. This is what you practice all week. That's your job. Put it in play and give them an opportunity. Look at the field position change, Kenny. Starting at least 15 yards if it goes in the end zone, right? 15 from the 25 to the 40. From the 40, on first down, it's McCaffrey. Christian McCaffrey across midfield. Carolina first down, gain of 14. Coming out of college, so many people said that McCaffrey couldn't run inside, but watch the block initially by Ryan Khalil, number 67. So when he walls it off there, that gives McCaffrey the opportunity to see where the cut is. So when people say he can't run inside, well, anyone can run inside if you're not contacted until six or seven yards downfield. Excellent job by the offensive line of Carolina creating space. 38 yards and only five carries for McCaffrey today. From the Giants, 46, it's McCaffrey again. And this time he's bottled up, loses yardage. B.J. Hill along with Snacks Harrison. Notice the difference for a running back when there's space and when there is not. It's very simple, isn't it, Kenny? Space, you gallop through. When there's not space, <laughs> you eat it up. And you just mentioned the guy who ate it up on the front defensive line. There he is, Snacks Harrison, number 98, who controlled the line of scrimmage right there. Speaking of eating it up, <laughs> Snacks in on the play, given his nickname by his former head coach with the New York Jets, Rex Ryan. Even his mom calls him Snacks now. Everybody does. There's McCaffrey, and this time with Snacks on the sideline, found some running room down to the 41-yard line of the Giants. But you do notice that Carolina is not very daunted if they have a run that doesn't go very well. A lot of teams in this league, if you don't run it once or twice, you have an unsuccessful play, you go away from it. Carolina gets stacked up on the, on the down previously. They come right back with another running play for good yardage to set up third manageable. Big play here, third down and five from the Giants, 41. Bunch formation to the left side, top of your screen. Panthers need the 36 for a first down. It's Newton after the fake to McCaffrey. Newton loses the football. Now, was Riley out of bounds? Was, was Curtis Riley 35 for the Giants? 
touching White when he first made contact with the football. And that's what you just pointed out. And I see the field judge, number 104, Dale Shaw, telling his fellow officials, I thought he saw him mouth the words, he was out of bounds. So you may have been right on it. Let's see. There's right. There he is. So to see the foot had contacted out of bounds and then come up in the air. See right there as he possesses the ball. There's the foot. And there's the football. And he's touching it. So he's out of bounds right, right there. You must reestablish if you become the first to touch the football. Correct. Forward out of bounds because the New York player was out of bounds when he touched the ball. It'll be... It's going to be first down at the spot of the fun. Excellent observation, Kenny Albert. And Cam Newton got bailed out on that one. The play worked because of Cam Newton's athleticism. Connor Barwin was out there and had the coverage and danced with him and watched Newton end up getting around Barwin. Barwin 53 does a nice job here. Look at him. He's in perfect position. But the athleticism beats him. And then right there, a nice tackle by Eli Apple. Knocks the ball free. And the technicality in the rules, and I call it a technicality, but the rules got him on that one because Curtis Riley's foot was out of bounds. But what a, what a nice play. Barwin was in position, just couldn't dance as long as he needed to, but Apple with a big time tackle knocked it free. So it's a first down for Carolina as Newton hands it off to McCaffrey. Landon Collins, the stop, gain of three for Christian McCaffrey, whose father, Ed, was a New York Giant draft pick. Spent his first three seasons with the Giants before winning three Super Bowls with the 49ers and the Broncos. Under four to play, second quarter. Panthers with a touchdown on special teams, and then Odell Beckham Jr. connected with Saquon Barkley on a 57-yard touchdown for the Giants. Panthers spent a lot of time in practice doing some extra work with Torrey Smith and Devin Funches in the past game. After the hesitation, McCaffrey gets wrapped up back at the 34-yard line by one of the new Giants this season, but he quickly became a leader, the former Ram Alec Ogletree. Really nice job. They're getting Josh Morrow. They got Josh Morrow back his first game this year. He had missed the first four games due to NFL suspension. And he comes right in and establishes a nice edge and allows Alec Ogletree, as you noted, Kenny, to get to the football and make the play. Morrow coming over from the Arizona Cardinals where he played for now Giants defense coordinator James Betcher. His first game as a Giant. Third down and seven from the Giants, 33. Newton throws, catches made by the tight end, Thomas, and it's Ogletree who takes him down. Another terrific play by Ogletree to keep Thomas from picking up a first down. And now Carolina will send out the field goal unit. Look at Ogletree in coverage. Reads Thomas going across field, but doesn't allow Thomas to run away from him. Thomas wins the route initially, but Ogletree takes the perfect angle so he can't turn up field. Collars him there and brings him to the turf short of the first down. Back-to-back -back excellent plays by Alec Ogletree. An excellent acquisition from the L.A. Rams. He flies across the field to make plays. Now the Giants, Charles, have used their final timeout to give them some more time on offense. As Carolina sets up for a 47-yard field goal attempt. Cano hit from this same distance earlier in this quarter. Give this Giants defense some credit. They're not letting Carolina just sprint away from them. They're making it difficult. And when you force field goal attempts, you often keep teams in sight. And after the last touchdown, they're only down seven. From the left hash, Michael Pilardi places it down. Gano from 47. He connects once again. Carolina now leads by 10. As we check in with Kurt Menefee, what's coming up during the Visa Halftime Report, Kurt? Coming up on the Visa Halftime, the Jaguars try to close in on the undefeated Chiefs. Ravens and Browns come together. And the 3 and one Bengals try and shut the door on the 3 and one Dolphins. It's all coming up on the Visa Halftime.
All right, thanks very much, Kurt. There is Saquon Barkley, who scored the Giants' last touchdown on the pass from, yes, Odell Beckham Jr. Yeah, not a typo. That's it. That actually happened, in case you didn't see it. A nice trick play by the Giants, and he was able to take it downfield. There are the two Giants who have thrown passes today. <laughs> and Odell Beckham with a perfect quarterback rating, 158.3. Don't think that won't come up in the meeting room next week. He'll just he'll just go by Eli, probably won't even say a word. And just mimic warming up, you know, throwing showing the throwing arm. Both out of the same high school. Newman High School in New Orleans. Isadora Newman. When Beckham was a high school student athlete. Eli and Peyton need some receivers during the offseason to throw to. Odell was one of them. Even as a high school student, <laughs> about as good as they were going, about as good as they were going to throw to in the offseason. In fact, our colleague Cooper Manning, we saw him earlier today on the pre-pregame show. He was the only other thousand-yard receiver at Newman High School before Beckham came along. Yeah, Cooper was a heck of an athlete now before he had to. Retired due to spinal stenosis. Five four, five four, five four. And now he's just an all around funny man for us here at Fox. Giants out of timeouts. 236 on the clock. Gallman in the backfield. First and 10 from the 25 yard line. And the pass out to the tight end, Red Ellison, for a gain of five. Second and five from the 30. Three receivers set for the Giants. Manning on second down to Beckham for a Giants first down. His fourth reception out to the 38. Odell Beckham Jr. certainly involved here in the first half. First was Samuel into the end zone, then Colin Jones with a Panthers touchdown. Saquon Barkley celebrating with OBJ. Two minute warning. Young Saquon Barkley fan here in Charlotte. Carolina leading the Giants 20 to 10. About accomplishing your goal right there. Yes, regards to Grandma. There you go. From the 33 on first down, just after the two minute warning, Manning throws, and the catch is made by Jawel Davis in Panthers territory. Gain of 22 for Davis. His first NFL reception. How about the way Eli Manning felt the pressure from his left side, danced to the outside and cleared a throwing lane and nailed it. No timeouts, low snap. Manning near side, 35 yard line. Again, it is Davis. This time five yards for the rookie out of Bethune Cookman. Beckham down, split out to the right. A minute 15. Second down and five. Manning's pass knocked down by Kyle Love. Time for a game break, Carissa. Thanks, Kenny. So the Jags were already down 13 0 when and Blake Bortles intercepted by Chris Jones, who returns this one 20 yards. The Chiefs getting offense from their defense here. They're up 20 to nothing. Okay. And Carissa, Chris Jones is going to go over to the offensive side of the building on Monday and tell the tight ends coach he is now available for extra duty. There you go. Chiefs looking to go 5 and 0 on the season. Third down and five. Manning to Barkley, but no gain on the play. And the clock continues to run for them. So it is now fourth down. This would be a 50. 253 yard attempt and you Gi know, Giants went for it earlier on fourth down could not convert and the Panthers had an opportunity there to stop the clock try and get the ball back with around a little bit less time and, and try and make one last push now and the Giants let it, let it go. send out the field goal unit offense hurrying off the field Giants did not have a timeout Rosas career long is 52 now the Panthers call a timeout because they had 12 men on the field. 
One of the Panthers was hurrying off the field, so Carolina uses their third and final timeout. Yeah, and Keekley was very alert on that. Luke Keekley, captain of the defense, made sure that they got the timeout so they didn't give up a play that would have given the Giants a first down. There's Chase Blackburn, the former Giant special teams coach for Carolina. Remember, he was involved in a huge play running off the field against New England in the Super Bowl. And he actually was up in the air along the sidelines. And, and how did that end up? Huge interception as well in yes. Super Bowl 46. Exactly. For Chase Blackburn. 53 yards. This would be a career long. Rosas has not missed an attempt this season. From 53, his kick is good. So a new career long for Aldrich Rosas as the Giants pull back to within seven. Entertaining first half here in Charlotte. We've had just about everything, Charles. Special teams touchdown for Carolina. Odell Beckham Jr. has gone 364 days without scoring a touchdown, but he throws one. Yeah, and, and we've spent a lot of time coming into this game and at the top talking about the Giants' offense and what ails them and how they can get that going. And they've done that to an extent, but we haven't spent enough time praising the defense because the defense has kept them in this. Remember, seven of those points go on the special teams, not against the defense. And right now we've got a 20 to 13 game. They keep giving their offense opportunities by limiting Carolina to field goal attempts. With that happening, game right now, seven-point game. If it stays that way, the Giants have to feel good going into the half. There's Alec Ogletree, made a big tackle earlier, holding the Panthers to a field goal. Who would have thought Beckham would throw a touchdown this season before he would catch scoring one, one himself? Yeah. I don't think anyone would have gotten that bend down. You didn't have that in the pool? No, did not. So, with 20 seconds remaining in the half, Muff punt leading to a Carolina TD. First career touchdowns for both Curtis Samuel and Colin Jones of the Panthers. Last time, two Panthers had their first touchdown of the same game three seasons ago. And Odell Beckham Jr. with his first career touchdown pass to Saquon Barkley for 57 yards. And Carolina had an opportunity to stop the clock on defense, and when they chose not to, exactly the result take a knee Carolina we'll go to the half we'll get the ball first they deferred at the start of this game so the Carolina Panthers with a 20 to 13 lead over Odell Beckham Jr. and Eli Manning and the rest of the New York Giants looking for their second win of the season the play of the first half presented by direct TV more for your thing, that's our thing. Beckham showing off that arm. Barkley into the end zone. His fourth touchdown in five games in his rookie season. So a seven-point halftime lead. Panthers will get the ball first. The Visa Halftime Report from Los Angeles coming up after these messages. Back in Charlotte, Odell Beckham Jr. with a touchdown pass in the first half. Carolina Panthers leading the New York Giants 20 to 13. Kenny Albert, Charles Davis, Pam Oliver. Saquon Barkley, the recipient of that pass from Beckham. Demir Bird is back deep for the Panthers. Aldrich Rosas, career long 53 yard field goal late in the second quarter. Gets things started. Cam Newton and the Panthers will start from their 25 yard line. Charles leading the Giants by seven. And to me, in this first half, I think we said it going into the half. The Giants' defense, I think, has done an excellent job. 
The seven points difference in this game came on a special teams play when Odell Beckham tried to block the gunner, uh, DJ Moore, for, for, for Carolina. It turned into a touchdown for the Panthers. But other than that, they've given their offense a chance, and the offense has shown signs of spark, especially the trick play from Odell Beckham Jr. to Saquon Barkley. Let's see if this Carolina offense can get back to running the football and controlling the line of scrimmage. Panthers start from the 25-yard line. The toss to McCaffrey. And Christian McCaffrey gains eight out to the 33, down to the field, Pat. Hey, Kenny, talking to both coaches at halftime, first Pat Shermer, I asked him what inspired that trick play. He said, well, we've worked on it a couple of times. It went well, and he thought it would give it a boost for the team. As far as Odell Beckham getting way more touches in this game, he said it's not to appease anybody. It's just the way the game is going, and it makes sense. Ron Rivera, meantime, he said if they pulled the trick play once, they could very well do it again, and we got to defend it. Back to you. All right, thanks, Pat. Second down and three. Cam Newton, eight of nine for 92 yards and one touchdown in the first half. This is Anderson, and he will be hit back at the 31-yard line. Ray Ray Armstrong to join the Giants late last season. He's been one of their best linebackers here in the early going this year. And he struggled a little bit in pass coverage, which is supposed to be his forte against New Orleans. So I thought we might actually see B.J. Goodson a little bit more today because he's a stouter run defender. But Ray Ray Armstrong, a former college safety, now turned NFL linebacker, played that one very well. Not a quarterback in high school. A lot of quarterbacks running around this field today that played it in high school, that's for sure. Including Ray Ray, third down and four. Panthers must get to the 35. Thomas, did he make the catch? Ian Thomas, the tight end out of the 49-yard line. They've called it a catch on the field, did he? Now, the question's going to be, because the ball's going to hit the ground, but did he have control in his hands when the ball hits the ground? And to me, the answer is yes. He actually bobbled it first, but got control, and as he went to the ground and the ball contacts the ground, I think he had both hands firmly on the football. Pat Shermer will challenge. We'll be back. It's first time. All right, to clean up the last play, it was initially ruled a catch, but then the umpire, Bill Schuster, comes running in. So it was actually a Carolina challenge, and the call on the field stands, which is incomplete pass. Yeah, and you have to go by the standard of the call on the field. When they've ruled it incomplete, was there enough to overturn it as a catch? I thought it I thought it was a catch. But because they called it no catch, was there enough to overturn it? The answer is no. And that's where I think they're doing a really nice job of this year is supporting the officials on the field and going the standard of their call. It has to be irrefutable evidence to change it. That's Tony Steratore, the back judge. So again, it was initially ruled a catch. Then they said no catch, so Ron Rivera had to challenge. And he's still talking about it with Jerome Boger. Yeah, and, and again, it's the standard of the call on the field that's going to get Coach Rivera because I would opine here, Kenny, that if they called it a catch on the field and Pat Shermer had challenged, they would, have, they would have stayed with catch. There was no way to change it either way, I thought, depending on what you called initially. See the hands? And see, and he grabs both hands, and the ball can hit the ground if you have possession. But because they called it incomplete, is that enough to overturn it? Answer is no. It's moving a little bit in his hands. But I do think on the flip side, if they'd called it a catch, it would have been hard to overturn it that way, too. So the Panthers lose a timeout. They are also out of challenges. That was their second challenge. Beckham back deep. Beckham fields this one at the 13. To the outside. There is a flag. During the kick, holding, receiving team, number 58. Ten yard penalty from the end of the kick. New York keeps the ball. First down. That's on Tay Davis, so this will force the Giants back. Yeah. 
Jackson right there. Tay Davis 58 working on number 53 Ben Jacobs. That's where it came from. Giants the least penalized team of the league coming into this game. It's only their second penalty today. But it forces them back to the seven yard line. Barkley in the backfield. Beckham split out wide to the right, top of your screen. On first and ten from the seven, it's Barkley. Out to the nine yard line, gain of two. Manning 12 of 20 in the first half. Barkley with the 57 yard touchdown reception from Beckham who caught four for 53. Now Beckham bottom of your screen matched up with Bradbury. And now a tight end uncovered. Ellis at 85. Man it throws it's Beckham across the middle. Odell Beckham Jr. picks up a first down. Mike Adams, the tackle, a gain of 19. Really nice scheme design by Pat Shermer and his offense. Ellison, 85, moves outside of Beckham, 13. Beckham in the slot now, working against Mike Adams, number 29. I'd circle it for you, but our Strader's down right now. So Beckham had to, Beckham goes inside of Adams. You end up getting a nice mismatch. Odell Beckham on a safety, and able to get inside and pick up nice yardage. So by splitting, Ellison out wide. Initially, he was uncovered. Bradbury had to move over to cover him, and that allowed Beckham to make the play against Adams. How about that spin move by Barkley? Saquon Barkley across midfield. Forward progress finally stopped at the Carolina 42-yard line. That's a 31-yard run for Barkley. But the league is learning very quickly that when Saquon Barkley is able to get just a sliver of life, let a spin move to create a gap, and his acceleration is awfully sudden. And then you've got to wrap him up downfield. Look at the spin right in the hole against Luke Keekley, one of the better tacklers in the league. And then he gets downfield with the acceleration, and they can't wrap him up initially. Look at him run through people. There's Adams, 29, Bradbury, 24 for additional yardage. So Barkley goes over 100, fifth straight game. Over 100 yards from scrimmage. And this pass is broken up by Bradbury. It was intended for Beckham. And so now Odell Beckham goes from wide receiver to cornerback on this play. James Bradbury has a chance to be the receiver, number 24 in white. Working against him in the slot. Nicely done on the, on the coverage. Yeah, gets his head around. He essentially became the receiver. And Odell Beckham Jr. had enough presence to be able to come underneath there and knock the ball away and prevent the interception. Gallman in the backfield, second and ten. Off the fake to Gallman. Manning's throw is caught by Beckham. For a Giants first down at the 26-yard line of Carolina. How about Eli Manning standing in there with the pressure in his face and delivering a strike? Watch Beckham get downfield, number 13. Working against Bradbury, who's done a nice job all day long of following him. But on this play, really good job of Beckham working inside and creating the separation and a strike from Eli Manning for another big pickup. 17 yards. Beckham to the sideline. Three tight ends in for the Giants. Off the fake to Barkley. Manning rolling right. Can't find anyone, and he throws it to the ground. Second and ten coming up. Yeah, he wanted Sterling Shepard on an over route coming from the backside of the formation. Oftentimes when you get out into the flat with a quarterback, you'll get three levels of receivers, short, medium, long. And he wanted Sterling on the mid, an intermediate route across the middle, and that was eaten up. I believe it might have been Michael Adams in the middle. Defensive back saw it coming and was able to take it away, and Manning throws it in the ground wisely. Beckham still on the sideline, second down and 10. Here's Barkley. Nothing this time. Mike Adams makes the tackle.
Well, Saquon Barkley is now tied for the second longest streak all time at the start of an NFL career. Five consecutive games, at least 100 yards from scrimmage. That's pretty impressive. Kareem Hunt doing it last year as a rookie with the Kansas City Chiefs. How about that? Th things have really jumped up, haven't they? Third down and 10. Giants must get to the 15. On the wide receiver screen, it's Beckham, and he's tackled right around. It's gonna, it's just short close. of the 15-yard line. It will depend on the spot. And Kenny, the tackle actually knocked him and spun him backwards. He didn't finish the run falling forward as he would have liked. The tackle knocked him backwards and made the first down in question. Good block there by Shepard, 87. See how he spun him backwards by Bradbury? Normally, a runner's going to finish it, try and finish forward, fall that way. But when he spins him, he knocks him back in the other direction. So the Giants going for it on fourth down as we take one more look. Manning on the sneak. We saw this from Eli Manning in week two in Dallas. Something we hadn't seen since, what, 2010? Correct. Where he would take the quarterback sneak and pick up the first downs. It worked well in Dallas. They brought it back here in Charlotte, and he picks it up. Twice in that Dallas game. Correct. This is the first trip into the red zone for either team today. We've had 33 points scored. First and 10 from the 14-yard line as Barkley looks to spin away from Peppers. He could not. There is a flag. And that's a whole lot of man right there telling the youngster, you can't get away from me, my man. Did he get a piece of the face mask, Charles? That's going to be the question. Let's take a look as we look at the replay. Right there at the top, did he get the mask? Because the second part, it looks like he's got jersey. And we see the flag already down on the left side of your screen. But from what I said, from there, he's got jersey. Did he get masked? That's what they're discussing. Fing watch watch the no forefinger. Play for face mask. The defender was in the collar of the runner. Second down. So the flag was picked up. Yep. He got a finger that didn't stay on the mask at all. Left hand and then pulls it down and ends up getting jersey. Loss of three. Second down and 13. Panthers have not stopped an opponent from reaching the end zone this season inside the 20. Manning to the end zone looking for Beckham. Bradbury the coverage. Bradbury number 24, Beckham 13, double moves it and Bradbury doesn't buy the first move and stays deep. And makes a nice play. You know, Brad Bradbury transferred in college, Kenny, from Arkansas State to Samford because he wanted to be a corner, not a safety. You see how it's paid off for him here in the NFL. And this is a spot that is a little bit surprising to me that Saquon Barkley would not be on the field on this critical third down. Giants have not converted on third down today. 0 for 6. Manning to the end zone. Beckham has it not. So watch Beckham 13. Your first question is, how is he so open? Well, it's zone coverage, and Mike Adams, number 29, the safety, buys something in the middle and leaves it into, turns it into an open space for Beckham. But how about Bradbury never giving up on the play, plays through his hands, and knocks it away. Great play by James Bradbury. So now a 36-yard field goal attempt. Rosas. Hit from 53 earlier, a career long. He connects to pull the New York Giants to within four. 
What a play. Giants held to three and not seven. There's Beckham on the right. Three catches during that drive, but Bradbury on the left made a great play to knock the ball out of his hands in the end zone. So the Giants held to a field goal. 13 play, 75 yard drive. They pulled to within four. And it wasn't even in man coverage, it was a zone coverage. Bradbury able to drop back and make the, make the play to force the field goal. Panthers start from there. 25. Charles, as we mentioned earlier, short week for the Giants. They will take on the Eagles at home on Thursday night. The defending Super Bowl champs up against the Giants. It all starts at 7.30 Eastern on Fox NFL Network and streaming on Prime Video. So much of a make or break week for the Giants coming into here one and three here at Carolina. And then as you just mentioned, short week at home against Philadelphia. Big time chance for them to make up some ground. And how about Philadelphia Day getting Minnesota and then on a short week, getting the Giants coming to town. First and 10, 25 yard line for Carolina. Newton complete to Funches for a Panthers first down out to the 46 yard line at 21 yard connection. Like what North Turner, the offensive play caller for Carolina did. There's so much of a running team on first down, he decides to go play action and throw it. Try and loosen things up a bit. The Giants defense has done a nice job starting to suffocate their running lanes. He's trying to open them back up again with the big pass to Funchess. That's his second reception. McCaffrey without a reception today. He came into the game as Carolina's leading receiver. From the 46, off the fake to McCaffrey. Newton fires, and that one is out of the reach of Jarius Wright. Curtis Riley defending. Second down and 10 for the Panthers from their 46 yard line. Newton 9 of 12 today. McCaffrey 52 yards on the ground. Another one with the play clock running down. And they lost a challenge earlier in the quarter, so only one timeout remaining for Ron Rivera. There's three-time Pro Bowl tight end Greg Olson. Grew up in Giants country in northern New Jersey. Panthers hope to have Olsen back real soon. Yeah, they'd love to have him back in a couple of weeks. He's been working out, and they're, they're hopeful. On second and 10, it's McCaffrey. Christian McCaffrey out to the 49-yard line. Gain of three, B.J. Hill. The tackle, third down and seven. That's a win for the Giants' defense, and James Betcher, their defense coordinator, she just mentioned third and seven, able to bring in his pass rush unit and try and get after Cam Newton here. The toughest part about rushing Cam Newton is getting him on the ground if you do get the opportunity and also not letting him break contain and pick up a first down with his legs. No sacks today for the Giants, a lead low five on the season. Down crowding the line of scrimmage here with the defensive front. Bunch formation to the left. Panthers must get to the Giants, 44. Newton moving to his right, looking for the marker, and he's got it. Kenny, that was all about Cam Newton being Cam Newton. Because watch, they back out of the blitz pressure. And then they have him covered because now they're rallying up to make the tackle. But look at him, he goes over Landon Collins. He takes number 99, Mario Edwards Jr. backwards with the force of his dive to pick up the yardage for the first down. Yeah, you get a chance to signal first down there. You've earned that one. He needed seven, he gained eight. From the 43, off the fake to McCaffrey. Newton down at the 41 yard line. And the left tackle, Chris Clark, slow to get up.
You mentioned it a little while ago, Kenny. Christian McCaffrey, haven't seen him in the passing game today. Normally a staple for Carolina. He's been utilized very well as a runner, but they haven't gotten him involved throwing it to him so far today. Averaging seven receptions per game over the first three. Off the fake to McCaffrey. Newton to the near side. Funches. He was. Could not come down in bounds. Incomplete. Watch the initial foot, which should be his left one. Right there, and it's on the white. Incomplete pass. Look at the official. See his eyesight right down on the line of scrub, right down the sideline, eyeing it the whole way. That's excellent hustle by him and excellent positioning to make that call. And a good job by Eli Apple to help. Make sure he did not come down in bounds. Third down and eight for Carolina from the Giants, 41. Three receivers set. Torrey Smith, slot to the left. He does not have a catch today. Newton's pass sails away from Smith, the intended receiver. What a Super Bowl with the Eagles last year. Panthers will punt. See, I think that he's got McCaffrey on a check down here. See how they collided in the secondary? You saw the linebacker level collide. He has McCaffrey, but he wanted a bigger chunk downfield and took it. Incomplete pass. I think if he gets it to McCaffrey, they're moving the sticks on that play. Beckham deep. Pilardi waiting at his 45. If they pick up five yards here, it could change what Ron right. Rivera wants to do. It would, He's not known as Riverboat Ron for, for nothing. They would put them into field goal range. Fashion. Defense, number 96, five-yard penalty, still fourth down. So Kareem Martin jumped. So instead of a 59-yard attempt. I think they're bringing the offense back on, Kenny. That's why I talked yep. about the Riverboat Ron Gano, in this situation. Gano was out on the field. Well, 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 he knows what he wants to do, which is kick it. That's what he gets paid to do. So this would be, if they elected to kick, this would be a 53, 54-yard attempt. Instead, Carolina will go for it on fourth and three. Remember, zone read is a big staple with McCaffrey and Cam if they want to run the football. Looking to capitalize on the penalty committed by Kareem Martin. Panthers need three yards. Newton fires, nearly picked off, but a flag. Torrey Smith, the intended receiver. Jenkins on the coverage. I think they got the Giants for a hold in the secondary, though. And, and I think they're going to tack on additional 15 for B.W. Webb in a confrontation with the official. So watch Webb 23 working downfield. He's got the contact and he rides and he stays with him past the five yard zone. So that's where the flag comes in. And then post play he protests the Decision watch vehemently. B, watch B.W. Webb right side right of the here. screen. And that's where he's going to protest the call. Fifteen-yard penalty added to the play, and this counts as the first unsportsmanlike penalty for disqualification for number 23. Wow, what a turn of events. Three consecutive penalties. Watch B.W. Webb right here as he's talking. That's Dale, Dale Shaw, Shaw, the field judge. And they pull him away, but the flag came from behind. It's one of the other officials throwing the flag in support of his own, in support of his colleague. And B.W. Webb last week in New Orleans, a face mask penalty away from the football kept the drive alive for New Orleans. They would have forced him to kick a field goal, gave him an opportunity to score points. And now Pat Shermer talking about it with the field judge, Dale Shaw. So three straight penalties. Kareem Martin is the Giants set up on the punt return, then Jenkins on fourth down, followed by BW Webb. Webb on sportsmanlike conduct.
So after all that, the Panthers' drive continues from the Giants' 16-yard line, first and 10. On the toss, McCaffrey, Clark leading the way. And McCaffrey takes a hard hit at the 14-yard line, another flag. Illegal block in the back. Offense, number 67. 10 yard penalty. Replay, first down. That's the center, the five time Pro Bowler, Ryan Khalil. Don't get too many opportunities to call his name for anything negative. See him working right in here on number 52, Alec Ogletree. And what they got was he got that little push, and you see his arms extended. And the officials can see that out in open field as McCaffrey was trying to set up a block. You don't get too many penalties with Ryan Khalil, one of the best centers in the NFL. So three straight Giants penalties, and now a flag on the Panthers, forcing Carolina back 10 yards. Newton on first and 20. Fires, he was looking for Samuel. Denoris Jenkins defending Curtis Samuel, who scored his first NFL touchdown back in the first quarter. See Samuel trying to adjust for a little back shoulder. Nice tight coverage by number 20, Janoris Jenkins, a pro bowler in 2016. Second team all pro that year as well. There's Martin who committed that first penalty, which kept this drive alive for Carolina as the Panthers set up to punt. Carolina empties the backfield, second down and 20. Newton looking, now he throws and it's picked off! Intercepted by Curtis Riley! A huge defensive play after the Giants committed those three straight penalties. Panthers not able to come away with points. Third career pick, first this season for Riley. There's Ian Thomas to the left, number 80. Cam Newton, the quarterback, number one. I thought that Thomas ran his route indecisively. And I think Cam was trying to guess what he was doing and ended up with a nice play by Curtis Riley of the Giants with the interception. Giants start from the 22. It's Sterling Shepard who makes the catch for a Giants first down out to midfield. Third catch of the game for Shepard. Picks up 28. And this slam route has been good to them all game long. Whether it's Shepard, whether it's Odell Beckham, and Eli Manning delivers it expertly and allows him to catch it on the run and continue to get upfield with the straight arm against Dante Jackson. First and 10 from midfield, Barkley. Brought down in the backfield once again, this time by k Short. So when we go back to the interception, Ian Thomas running his route, the rookie out of Indiana. He's right here, number 80. But watch at the end of the route, watch his movements. Not very decisive. I think, he, I think Cam Newton thought he was gonna end up inside in front of Curtis Riley, the safety, and he threw it there to try and give him a chance to body Riley away. Instead, Riley was the only one home and comes up with a big play, and the Giants have momentum. On to the second pick thrown by Newton this season for the Giants, only their fourth takeaway. Thought it was a big one. Second down and 11. Manning complete, it's Shepard again. What a touch. On the pass for Manning. So watch what happens here. Odell Beckham just stops to draw attention. He brings Brad Bradbury up. That makes it a one-on-one -on -one route from the slot with Sterling Shepard on Captain Munderland. Munderland got him on the first series of the game. Shepard just got him back for a big one. 26-yard connection. Three receivers set from the Carolina 25-yard line. Manning looking for Beckham. It is picked off by Mike Adams. So the Giants give it right back. Mike Adams, who grew up in the shadows of the Meadowlands, he's from Patterson, New Jersey. His 28th career interception. 
It wasn't that long ago that Mike Adams' eyes took him to the wrong place, and James Bradbury had to make a one-on-one -on -one play against Beckham in the end zone and knock it away. Remember down in the goal line? Watch on this play. Watch in the left side of your, I mean, the right side of your screen. Adam shows like he's going to play down towards the box, drops back into coverage, and gets right into the passing lane where the slants have been so effective. That's an excellent veteran play by the guy they call Pops. His grandmother named him that when he was younger for short for Popeye. Now it's for veteran leadership. First interception in 151 pass attempts for Eli Manning. Only his second this year. So the Panthers take over at their 32-yard line. On the toss, it's McCaffrey. Snatch Harrison once again. He is a hard man to move. But he does a good job. Watch him right in the middle, number 98, right on the nose of Ryan Khalil. And look at him just fight through and ends up enveloping Christian McCaffrey. What he does so well, Kenny, is he plays with his hands. Talk about Harrison. It's not just his bulk. He uses his hands to separate from blockers and then go get ball carriers. Panthers empty the backfield, second down and 12. Encroachment, defense number 95, five-yard penalty, still second down. That's on the rookie out of NC State, B.J. Hill. He's playing very well for a youngster. First season in the league, doing a nice job both in run support and giving a nice inside presence rushing the passer. He had sacks in his previous two games. Long count by Newton. Another flag, this time a false start. False start. Offense, number 13. Five-yard penalty. Second down. That's on the whiteout. Jarius Wright to Los Angeles for a game break. Carissa. Thanks, Kenny. The Packers, it was 24-0 at half when Aaron Rodgers now connects with Lance Kendricks for the one-yard score. The two-point conversion, no good. So they still trail 24-14. All right, thanks, Carissa, here in Charlotte. Four-point Carolina Panthers lead. Second down and 12 following the penalty. Newton looking, can't find anyone. Now throws, and it's Funches who comes back to make the catch for a Carolina first down out to the 44, 14-yard completion. As the third quarter comes to an end in Charlotte. Sterling Shepard of the Giants taking out his frustrations. Yeah, very interesting because I don't think there was a wrong route. I think this might be the frustration being one and three and an opportunity going by the wayside. But look who was playing Peacemaker. Odell Beckham Jr. trying to calm down his teammate. First play of the fourth quarter. This is Jarius Wright. And it's B.W. Webb who committed that personal foul which cost the Giants 15 yards back in the third quarter. He makes the tackle. Watch him here in the slot. This is a really nice play because he got his composure back quickly. Just played off of the blood. Attempted block by Torrey Smith. Upset after the last set of calls went against him. Got his head back together and came up and made a very nice play in the open field. The unsportsmanlike conduct call on Webb earlier did not lead to Carolina points. Both teams were in field goal range on their last drives. Panthers were at the Giants 26 before the interception. Then the Giants were at the Panthers 25 prior to their pick. That pass intended for McCaffrey. Would have been his first reception of the day. So it is now third down and long for Carolina. Only two third down conversions combined in today's game. And you go to any NFL facility, and you and I both are fortunate enough to do it every week, right? 
What, do, what does every coaching staff tell us, both offense and defense, how important third down is? And today has been dominated by the defenses. And every third down is different. You could have a third down and one, third down and 13. Always goes into that same stat, which is unfair in a way, but that's how it goes. This pass is nearly picked off by Landon Collins, and now a flag. Funches still down. Funches 17 in white, running his route. That's Jenkins 20. And look at the convergence. Thomas 31, Collins 21. Not sure what the flag is about. Let's see. There it is. That's what's good. That's where I think the flag is coming is Collins' foul. head. Unnecessary roughness. Defense number 21. Contact on a defenseless player. 15 yard penalty. Automatic first down. Now Jerome Boger announced 21, but it looked like 31. 31. Michael Thomas. See, to me, Collins is inadvertent because he's trying to make the play. If you're making the call, Thomas 31 over the top, but I don't like the call at all. I think everyone's going for the football, and to me it's inadvertent that their heads end up coming into it. Yeah, that's a tough one for me, watching the Giants make the play on the football. No one leads with their head. No one does anything. That's a tough one. To me, that's just an excellent defensive play that they're not going to get credit for. First and 10, 44-yard line. It's McCaffrey, and he's bottled up. Kareem Martin, first Giant in on the tackle. No game. If you go back to this play, to me, the reaction of the three Giants converging on the football, inadvertent, they're going to call it. It should have been, if you're calling it at all, it's 31 Thomas coming over the top. But he's not really, to me, that's not really head-to-head -head contact. His hands were leading way out in front of his body. To me, there should have been no call on that play. Just an excellent defensive job by, deep, by New York. Second and 10. Newton's pass caught for a first down and more by D.J. Moore. Collins finally brings him down inside the 25-yard line. And if you are a Carolina Panthers fan, expect to see more and more of number 12 worked into the offense. The Giants have run the slant to great success. Here comes one by Carolina. And what did I tell you in the first half about the scouting report of D.J. Moore? What makes him so valuable? As soon as he catches the ball, he becomes a running back. And look at him running with force and purpose to pick up extra yardage. 24th overall pick. Two ahead of Calvin Ridley off to a terrific start in Atlanta. First and 10 from the 24. McCaffrey runs it to his own man. The right guard, Trey Turner. It's pretty good form tackle by Trey Turner, number 70, but it's not one he wanted to make because there was a hole there for McCaffrey. Watch McCaffrey on the cutback. He sees the opening, and Turner trying to block on number 55, Ray Ray Armstrong, gets stood up and knocked backwards into his own ball carrier and halts his progress. See, that former, for a former safety, he's turned around, got a little force to him, doesn't he, Ray Ray Armstrong? Sure does. Ninth play of this drive. Second down at 11. McCaffrey on the jet sweep inside the 20 and then knocked out of bounds. As we head for another game break, Carissa. Thanks, Kenny. Steelers up by 10 in the fourth when this is a way to quiet the critics. Antonio Brown, the recipient of this 47 yard touchdown pass from Ben Roethlisberger, his second on the day. Steelers up big, 34 17. And Carissa, we're seeing Antonio Brown work on all kinds of dances. We see him on the commercials. See him now in the end zone where he felt like he belonged a long time ago. And if Pittsburgh wakes up on offense and gets their defense settled in, then AFC North is going to be a heck of a fight. Third down and five with the play clock winding down. Caught by McCaffrey inside the five to the end zone. Touchdown.
We talked during the game about how much Christian McCaffrey was not being used as a pass catcher. Now they swing him out of the backfield, and right at the end, yes, he gets inside. Landon Collins attempt to tackle for a touchdown, and there's another happy fan. Rocking an Auburn hat, a Clem Newton shirt, and an NFL football. Now that's a full day for a young man. McCaffrey did not have a reception today until this drive. His first touchdown this season. Gano, the extra point. Panthers lead by 11. First, the penalty. Thomas on Funches leading to this Carolina celebration. There's Christian McCaffrey on the right. He scored the Carolina touchdown after the drive was kept alive by the penalty call against Michael Thomas on third down but and I 13. Did not see. So, but look at the touchdown. So what you have here, okay, right there, but look here. You want McCaffrey coming out of the backfield. So you had Collins talking to Janoris Jenkins in the secondary, making a switch call because Collins thought he had, was supposed to have him, wanted Jenkins to take McCaffrey, doesn't get communicated, McCaffrey runs free, touchdown Carolina. Giants trailing by 11, start at their 25 yard line. They both scored touchdowns today. And look what you've got. Rushing yards, McCaffrey here. Receiving yards, Barkley here. Total yards, Barkley here. And then total touchdowns is a push. Both of them, big impact on their offenses. Both drafted by Dave, Dave Gettleman. Gettleman. Now the general manager of the New York Giants, the previous general manager, the Carolina Panthers, got an all clear on his cancer diagnosis this, just this week. Wonderful to see Coach Gettleman again. Absolutely. A former high school coach. Yeah, I played against coach, coaches' teams twice. My, my high school team did. We won both of them, and Coach Gettleman's still upset about a certain two-point conversion. Oh, he remembers. Call, he we'll remember, get into we, that later. We, he remembers every play for those games. <laughs> Second and nine for the Giants. Again, Pat Sherbert telling us yesterday, we have to score more points. Giants have gone over two seasons without reaching 30. They need at least 28 today. Trailing by 11 in the fourth quarter. And it's pass picked off. It is Mike Adams again. So after Manning went 152 attempts without throwing a pick, back to back attempts intercepted by Adams. He's from the same hometown as former Giants star Victor Cruz. Fifth career, two interception game. Mike Adams said he had about 30 friends and family members traveling down for the game, and he warned them, you better be rooting for the Panthers. Yeah, you are nowhere in Giants gear, folks. Here's McCaffrey spinning ahead for a gain of one. So Mike Adams, you just mentioned him, Kenny. Here he is, okay? And Sterling Shepard, number 87 in blue, watch where the route is run. He runs it out in here. They get the sense that Eli Manning thought the route was going to be more in here. Because look where the ball is. And Mike Adams reads it very well, slides out to the outside, and gets his second pick of the day. I think all of his friends are happy to be in Panthers gear now, Kenny. They lead by 11. Panthers have scored two of their touchdowns off giant turnovers. Now the screen to McCaffrey. And he's tackled by B.J. Goodson. No gain on the play. Down to Pam. Well, wide receiver Devin Funches was not on the field as the Panthers celebrated that McCaffrey touchdown after spending some time in the medical tent. Funches then headed back to the locker room. You'd think that hard hit was the problem, but no. He had to get an IV. It's a very, very hot day, as you guys know. Pam, you can attest better than anyone. You're right about that. <laughs> I mean, you're down there right in the heat of the whole <laughs> thing the entire game. 
And it, just think, you're going through it. No IV for you. You're a player. Now Funchess is back on the sidelines. Back from the locker room. Third down and eight. Newton under pressure from Landon Collins. It's picked off by Janoris Jenkins. Jenkins in Panthers territory, then cuts it back. Picks up a blocker inside the 40. And down at the 34-yard line of Carolina. So Cam Newton, like Eli Manning, throws his second pick of the second half. And this one it starts with Landon Collins pressure from the safety position. Number 21 right here. Now watch him come at Cam Newton right there. And he jumps over the attempted block by Christian McCaffrey and knocks Cam Newton off stride trying to hit Ian Thomas. That pressure helped force an inaccurate pass. Look at Collins' athleticism over the attempted cut block of McCaffrey. The errant pass taken in by Janoris Jenkins, and the Giants are in business. That's four interceptions, the last five possessions, the last 19 plays in this game, four picks. Now Barkley. Barkley wrapped up after a short game, second and nine. Under nine minutes remaining for Janoris Jenkins, his second pick. We saw the pressure from Landon Collins, and now the Giants with an opportunity to pull closer and coming into the game there was a lot of discussion about the Giants secondary that they were doing a nice job but they weren't making the game changing plays they were used to Collins came into the game with three passes broken up and no forced fumbles no interceptions well he just made a changing play there with the pressure on Newton second down and nine as Manning fires looking for Beckham in the end zone there is a flag and Beckham makes the catch for a Giants touchdown For Odell Beckham Jr., his first touchdown reception in 364 days. Go back to our Fox kickoff show earlier today. Michael Vick, former NFL great quarterback, he said that at some point in this game, the Giants just have to push the ball downfield and give Odell Beckham a chance to make a play. And they did exactly that with Eli Manning putting it out there and Beckham making the play, and the Giants will now go for two. If they are successful, it would pull the Giants to within a field goal. Barkley by himself coming back into the backfield. Off the fake to Barkley. Manning directing traffic throws, and they convert. Rhett Ellison on the two-point conversion. So the Giants take advantage of the interception by Janoris Jenkins. It's now a three-point game. Manning connected with Beckham in the end zone. Both teams have turned it over twice in their last three possessions. And they've also both scored a touchdown. Wild second half. We had that stretch of four interceptions in 19 plays. And to me, this game now is in the hands of the New York Giants defense. Momentum to clearly on the side of the guys wearing the blue jerseys. Can they make it stand up here? Big drive for Carolina coming up. With just over eight minutes remaining, Panthers start from their 25. First, it was Curtis Riley, his first interception of the season. Then Mike Adams. Adams again. And then Janoris Jenkins setting up the Giants touchdown. And don't forget the stop that the Giants thought they had on third and 13 and the big penalty call against Michael Thomas. They kept the drive alive and Carolina got into the end zone. So let's see what Carolina fashions here. And to me, this is where Greg Olson is really missed by the Panthers. A terrific possession receiver that Cam Newton trusts. Three point game. First and 10, 25 yard line for Carolina. Newton drops back to pass. Two flags are thrown as Newton throws it away. And another flag. As Newton wound up on the ground. 
I think the Giants were about to get a holding call against Carolina, and they just negated it with the hit on Cam Newton. Looked like Chris Clark, the left tackle, had grabbed hold. against each team. Holding, offense, number 74. Personal foul, roughing the passer. Defense, number 72. These fouls all set, we play first time. Okay, so the hold happens right here. Okay, that's holding, number 95, the rookie B.J. Hill by Chris Clark. Now as Cam Newton tries to escape, gets rid of the football, and the contact by Kerry Wynn is up high. And that's where the call comes from Jerome Boger. You see the official right on the spot looking right into the play. There's almost another big play for the Giants. Would have gotten 15 yards and really set things up big for Carolina behind the chains. Exactly eight minutes on the clock. McCaffrey comes in motion into the backfield. First and ten from the 25-yard line off the fake to McCaffrey. Pass caught, taken out to the 30-yard line. And then the tackle made by Kerry Wynn on D.J. Moore after a gain of five. Now Funches back on the field. We heard from Pam about his situation. So that I.V., now working for him, able to get back onto the field, as Pam reported. Second down and five. Three receivers set. McCaffrey set up to the right of Newton. Newton's pass caught. And it's a first down for Carolina. Funches out to the 36. That was very simply what Cam Newton likes to say about Devin Funches. That was a big boy catch. Because Funches is 6'4", 225. I think he's a little bit bigger than that. Just went right into the teeth of the traffic, makes the catch, possesses the ball, and uses his body to gain that extra additional yardage for a first down. His team leading fourth reception today. Under seven minutes remaining. Carolina leading by three. Manhurts shifts it to the backfield. From the 36-yard line, it's Newton after the fake to McCaffrey. And Newton forcing his way forward, knocks over Curtis Riley. He'll be marked down just shy of the marker after a gain of nine. You know, you often talk to guys about whether they play offense or defense, and defensive guys say, I want to be the hit-e, not the hitter. I want to be the hitter, not the hit-e. Well, in this case, Cam Newton playing offense becomes the hitter. He drops his shoulder and runs through Eli Apple initially. Look at him. He drops it just like a running back. You talk about running backs running behind their pads. He does that, runs through that one, runs through Josh Morrow, Landon Collins, and nearly picks up a first down. Second down and one on the toss. It's McCaffrey. And McCaffrey has a first down as he eluded Riley. New set of downs for the Panthers. You know, they talk about North Turner coming in and helping Cam Newton get more easy completions to help his percentage and move the sticks. Not anything easier than that right there, because that is a forward pass. That's how it goes down. And Torrey Smith comes out of the game with an injury. Smith, number 11 in white, stalk blocking. Does a nice job working and comes up a little bit limp, a little bit gimpy there as he worked on number 23, B.W. Webb. Now, Josh Ball gets off the field in time. Giants would have had 12 men. Newton across midfield. And then he's tackled by Jenkins at the New York 46. We have five minutes remaining to Los Angeles. Kurt. I want to get you fired up for America's Game of the Week. That's what Malcolm Jenkins is doing for his Eagles team right now. Philadelphia, 
and the Vikings in a rematch of last year's NFC title game. It comes your way when you guys are done with the Giants and the Panthers. Kenny, Charles, and Pam. All right, thanks, Kurt. Pat Shermer was a part of that NFC Championship game. He was the Vikings offensive coordinator, and the Eagles will be the Giants' next opponent in four days. Second down and three. McCaffrey. B.J. Goodson made the tackle. Just short of a Carolina first down. Giants have all three of their timeouts. As we approach four minutes remaining, Panthers lead this game by three. And they're going to bring in another extra offense, not to say another, an extra offensive lineman, Amini Silatolu, number 65, comes in to give him a little more heft across the front. North Turner behind the glass, Panthers offensive coordinator. Third down and inches. It's Newton on the sneak. What a push by the Giants front. It will depend on the spot. Tremendous surge by their defensive line. B.J. Hill, the rookie out of North Carolina State. Dalvin Tomlinson of the Giants injured on the play. We'll be back in 30 seconds right after this message. Ryan Khalil shaken up on that last play. Dalvin Tomlinson of the Giants was shaken up as well. And this is a guy they can ill afford to lose. Watch the surge, though, from the defensive front of the Giants. They always talk about the leverage and low man winning the battles. They got in underneath the blockers of Carolina and made it very difficult for Cam Newton to run the sneak. You see Hill there. You also see coming in Ogletree 52. 93 up front. Also making a nice play. B.J. Goodson coming off the bench. And Ryan Khalil, who they missed most of last season with some shoulder injuries, shoulder and neck. They can ill afford to lose their five-time pro bowler. But Tyler Larson, a capable backup who's played a couple of games starting at guard. Now, you just saw right there what you worry about, though, with a new quarterback in center, right? The exchange. How much have you worked on it? Larson's played guard mainly this season. Filled in for Khalil last year. Panthers come up short on the measurement. I think I'd be surprised if they don't go for it here just because of Ron Rivera's past history, and he wants to try and close them out right now. I'm not sure I wouldn't come right back with another sneak. I know that they beat him there, but you're talking about Cam Newton as your quarterback. Listed as 6'5", 245, much bigger and stronger. If he just gets low and surges forward, he should be able to pick up that first down. If they don't make it, it would give the Giants excellent field position. Timeout taken by the Giants. So with 327 remaining, huge play coming up here. Fourth and one for Carolina with a three-point lead. And this just speaks to the past history of Ron Rivera going forward in times when you can play conservative, punt it downfield, rely on your defense. But the way this NFL game is played nowadays and the way this one is going, possession is more important to them at this point. I see them going for it. I wouldn't be surprised again if they come back with Newton with a sneak. We welcome those of you who just joined us. Kenny Albert, Charles Davis, Pam Oliver in Charlotte, North Carolina. Carolina Panthers lead the New York Giants by three. 327 remaining, fourth down and one for Cam Newton and the Panthers. On fourth down, Newton looking to throw. It is caught. The first down and more by Jarius Wright. The Panthers needed one yard. They gained 26. 
Well, so much for the sneak from Newton. And not only that, he doesn't even opt for Christian McCaffrey in the flat immediately. He goes for the second level throw to Jarris Wright, who came over from Minnesota and is known as a third down chain mover. He does it in a big way on fourth down. The guts of Ron Rivera to go for it. And how about the guts of his quarterback to make that throw? Riverboat Ron Rivera in midseason form. Play clock winding down. Panthers get the snap off in time from the new center. Paulo Larson for the injured Ryan Khalil. The handoff goes to C.J. Anderson. And now the Giants will use their second timeout. And real quick, Kenny, a byproduct. They forced the Giants to use a timeout before that fourth down play. That helps Carolina. Giants have only one remaining. Seven point Carolina lead at halftime. Four turnovers in the second half. Mike Adams with the interception. It's first of two, then Janoris Jenkins. Leading to a Christian McCaffrey touchdown. Odell Beckham Jr. with his first touchdown reception of the season for the Giants. And that pulled New York to within three. And then a key penalty. That's Kerry Wynn on Cam Newton. And that one, I think, was for where the hit was delivered. And Jerome Boger, the official, right on the play, up high. That's going to draw a flag every time against the quarterback. Tenth play of the drive for Carolina. Second down and eight, 16 yard line. Off the fake to Anderson. Newton is pulled down by Connor Barwick. Back at the 21 yard line of the Giants. Use their final timeout. All they're thinking, can we force a field goal attempt? That's the key for the Giants here. Keeps them in it. We welcome a new audience here in Charlotte as we take another look at the last play. Sacked by Connor Barwin of Cam Newton on second down with the Carolina Panthers leading the New York Giants by three. Two minutes, 27 seconds remaining. That's really good hustle by Barwin because he'd gotten pushed inside by the tight end Chris Manhurts, but stayed with it, kept pursuing, and made the play. He's been filling in for Olivier Vernon, still out with the high ankle sprain. They're looking to get him back as soon as possible. And the Giants look to hold the Panthers to a field goal here. Giants are out of timeouts. Four down at 13. Panthers must get to the seven. For a first down, McCaffrey slot to the left. Newton on third down. To the end zone, incomplete. So the clock stops with 2.21 remaining. Now a flag. A late flag at the end of the play. And it's right in the middle. No one in the area. Could it be one of the intentional grounding calls we've seen in recent weeks where no one's around? There is no foul for illegal contact on the play. Fourth down. So the Giants did their job, and they did it well, forcing the field goal attempt. Even if it goes through the post, they're just down six. I'll tell you what, there's been a lot of adversity for New York today, and they have fought and scrapped their way to continue to be in this game. This will be a 39-yard attempt. Gano has connected twice from 47. He's made 33 straight from inside 50. From the left hash, Gano's kick is good. Six-point game. Giants will get the ball back. It's been a big day for Odell Beckham Jr. of the Giants. A touchdown pass to Saquon Barkley. 57 yards in the second quarter. They celebrate. And then Manning hits Beckham in the end zone. Here in the fourth quarter from 33 yards out, his first touchdown reception of the season. So a passing touchdown, a touchdown reception, and at least 100 receiving yards. First time since Mark Clayton of the Ravens back in 2008. It's pretty impressive. And he's also returned punts. Had an issue on one of them, which led to a Carolina touchdown. 
It's an opportunity, obviously, for the Giants to get off the schneid at one and three start. You've mentioned it before. They play Thursday night against Philadelphia. Short week. A big week for the Giants, but they have a quarterback who's been there before. This opportunity to take his team downfield. It's have now arrived again for Eli Manning. Giants out of timeouts. They will start from their 25 yard line. They need a touchdown. Cam Newton, two touchdown passes, two picks. McCaffrey, 57 yards on the ground, and a touchdown reception. We talked about Beckham's day, and Saquon Barkley, fifth consecutive game to start his NFL career over 100 yards from scrimmage, tied for the second longest streak all time. And Carolina has Eric Reed on the field for the biggest drive of the game, recently signed. Pam Oliver said he'd be on a pitch count today for 25 to 30 plays. He's here for the biggest ones of the game. Giants must go 75 yards in 2 minutes 16 seconds. Manning throws on first down. Out of the 33 yard line it's Russell Shepard for a gain of 8. Clock winding down towards the 2 minute warning. So Manning will head over to the sidelines, looking to lead the Giants on a game-winning drive. Carolina Panthers by six. Carolina led by seven at the half. It is now a six-point game. Giants with two minutes remaining, no timeouts. Second down and two from their 33-yard line. Manning throws complete to Red Ellison, the tight end for a first down out to the 45. Gate of 12. What you have to keep an eye on is the Panthers are going to play safeties deep. And if you get the ball to a Beckham or a Shepard underneath and you don't tackle him immediately, there's room to roam after the catch. A minute 40 on the clock from the 45 yard line. Manning fires downfield for Russell Shepard. And the former Panther makes the catch. He was not touched. Shepard. As he goes to the ground, is there any type of contact from Dante Jackson, the rookie? And right there, you see it. The previous play is under review. Now, because it was ruled a touchdown, all scoring plays are reviewed. So this one should come back to Dante, that spot. Dante Jackson fortunate to make that play. After Russell Shepard goes by him and what redemption for Shepard from earlier in the ball game when he had a ball pop out of his hands it should have been a completion a penalty followed soon after and what a monster play there the rookie out of LSU Dante Jackson gets taken to school late in the ball game the one place you can't get beaten this situation is deep and it happened so the officials did not rule that he was touched they signaled touchdown. Our replays certainly seem to indicate that he was touched at the 15 yard line. So here it is. So look at Jackson and look where his head is. He's looking inside and his feet stop a little bit. And the receivers say, when we're even with a defensive back, we're leaving. And there he goes, right past him. Dante Jackson might have gotten just a tad too comfortable on the corner, thinking his 4 2, four, three, two speed will catch up. But Shepard left him. Good play at the end by Jackson tagging him down. They'll bring this one back. But the one place you cannot get beat in this situation is over the top, and the youngster let it happen. After reviewing the play, the runner was down by contact at the 15-yard line. Because this occurred after the two-minute warning, there's a 10-second runoff applicant. Game clock operator, please, please reset the game clock to 1.33. So it'll take 10 seconds off the clock. Giants have gone 37 straight games, including the postseason, without reaching 30 points. A touchdown would give them 30. 
So it's a 40-yard connection from Manning to Russell Shepard as Manning goes over 300. And who will cover Saquon Barkley out of the backfield? First and 10, 15-yard line, pass caught by Barkley, inside the five, to the end zone, touchdown! Look at the, look at him going airborne. If you're an action sport person, what do they call that, Kenny? Getting big air? Look at this. Ball inside the pylon, I do believe. Beautiful angles. We've got such great people working. The camera works phenomenal. And that ball looks like it's inside the pylon. Let's see how it's ruled. Ruled a touchdown on the field. Confirmed. Extra point coming up with the game tied. And Barkley shaking up. So the Giants reach that 30-point mark for the first time since the last game of the 2015 season. The extra point is good by Rosas. The Giants take a one-point lead with 68 seconds remaining. So Barkley, 26, watch him come out of the backfield. Who had to cover him? Well, they had Shaq Thompson, excuse me. That's number 94, Efe Obata, a defensive end trying to drop into coverage. Red Ellison occupied Michael Adams, number 29. And Barkley hurls himself into the end zone to tie the game. And then after Rosas' extra point, the Giants have battled all game long and now put themselves in a position to win this one with one drive left from Carolina. Last time the Giants scored 30, Tom Coughlin's final game as their head coach in a loss against interim head coach Pat Shermer he and the Philadelphia, the Philadelphia Eagles. Last time the Giants scored 30. I like how you tie that all together. That's pretty good. But there's one timeout left for Carolina. Eli Manning, we said he'd been there before for late drives. Here's Cam Newton's opportunity now, early in this season, to bring his team back. Eli's need three. Since throwing those two picks, Charles, 5 of 5, 108 yards, two touchdowns. It helps when your personality is so unflappable and you don't let emotions get involved. Here's Cam Newton's opportunity now. Remember, they just need three. And Graham Gano inside of 50 yards. How many in a row now, Kenny? 33, 34? Three today, 34 overall. And a new center in the ball game, Tyler Larson, number 69. In for Ryan Khalil. So watch the quarterback center exchanges. They need them to be clean. From the 25, Panthers need to get it to field goal range with a minute eight remaining in regulation. Newton under pressure. And Samuel unable to make the catch. Newton took a hit from B.W. Webb. Don't expect James Betcher, the defense coordinator of the Giants, to totally just sit back and let Cam Newton stay in the pocket and throw. You just mentioned there B.W. Webb, a cornerback, the nickelback, came right at Cam Newton as a free runner to put pressure on him. They're not going to let him just sit back there and survey the field. They're going to want him to make quicker decisions and hope to cover downfield as they just did there. Second and ten. Newton fires across the middle and it's caught out at the 45-yard line by D.J. Moore. 20-yard pass play, Carolina first down, 50 seconds remaining. They need to go about 18, 20 more yards to get into field goal range for Graham Gano. From the 45. Newton to the far side. Looked like Funches slipped. Eli Apple defending. 35 seconds remaining. 
You're exactly right. Funches did slip, making his cut. Watch Funches 17 to the right of your screen. As he turns to go back, Pam Oliver mentioned the field conditions were a little slippery earlier in the game. And could this cost them a timeout with him getting off the field? Good hustle by Devin Funches, saving his team a timeout. The one that they have remaining. 35 seconds. Play clock is at five. Newton on second down, throws a bullet. It's complete to McCaffrey. And he's tackled by Landon Collins at the 46, just shy of a first down. And now Carolina uses their final timeout. They need to go about 10 more yards to get it to field goal range. No timeouts remaining. The last time these teams met back in 2015, the Panthers were 13 and 0. A wild comeback by the Giants. Rashad Jennings with a touchdown. Gano had a field goal blocked by Dominique Rogers Cromarty. Then a Panthers miscue. Manning to Beckham for a touchdown. And then Gano would connect on the game winner from 43 yards out as the Panthers went to 14 and 0 on the season. Yeah, on their way to a Super Bowl appearance, 15 and 1 regular season. Super Bowl 50. Lost to Denver out in Santa Clara. Third down and one. No timeouts remaining. 30 seconds on the clock. Here is McCaffrey, and he picks up the first, but the clock is running. They're going to have to hustle now. Carolina's got to find a way to get back to the line of scrimmage. They can't stop the clock. Line of scrimmage, the 45. Not yet in field goal range. Newton will spike it. With 11 seconds remaining, it'll be second down. That inside call to McCaffrey with no timeouts left is the one that's a little bit puzzling. Obviously, if it pops, you're a genius, but in that situation, a risk-reward. Because look at the amount of time that drops down. That was 30 seconds, I believe, when they started that play. And this was McCaffrey picking up the first down. McCaffrey picks the first down. Remember, folks, it's not like college football. A first down doesn't stop the clock to right. reset the chains. And our yellow line, unofficial. Looked like he just got there. But now, only 11 seconds remaining. Carolina not yet in field goal range. Newton throws out of bounds. Down to six seconds. See, Here I comes the field goal unit. Line of scrimmage is the 45, so this would be about a 63-yard attempt. Gano's career long is 54. So Gano from 63. From the left hash. Ball is placed down. Gano from 63 yards out. It is good. Graham Gano connecting from 63 yards out. A day that started with the Panthers introducing their special teams. They scored a special teams touchdown in the first half. And now a 63-yard game-winning field goal. Time now for America's Game of the Week.